I, you know, this is a wonderful moment for me. It's a great pleasure to be here, of course, and uh, certainly a great honor and privilege to release uh, the book of uh, who I consider my real mentor in films, Mr. Satyajit Ray. Although it was never formal, but the fact is that I learned more about cinema from him than anybody else. What I would like to do, actually, is instead of delivering a, a kind of long, very formal kind of talk, I would like to make several kinds of statements and take my own positions, not only regarding the cinema, but also about how films have been functioning in our country and then certainly what is happening on the contemporary scene, particularly in terms of the vanguard of filmmaking in our country. Uh, let me just start off. You know, recently I came across a very interesting uh, uh, quotation of Herbert Simon. He, he was a Nobel Prize winner in economics. I don't remember which year, but he said something quite interesting. He said, in recorded history, there have been perhaps three pulses of change powerful enough to alter men in basic ways. First, of course, was the introduction of agriculture. Then the second one was with the Industrial Revolution. And the third, of course, was the revolution in information processing, which is the present. Now, the, re the reason why I'm talking about this is because, you see, how changes have occurred, particularly in terms of culture and arts, because these are areas that don't change as quickly as changes in science. Now, as far as uh, India is concerned, if I were to look at the effects of the Industrial Revolution, they started really in the early 19th century when you suddenly had certain kinds of ideas that had come out of the Industrial Revolution, ideas of the Enlightenment Project, because the Enlightenment Project really, people, thinkers like Rousseau, Voltaire, and so on, had come up with certain kinds of ideas, and then you had the idea of equality, you know, fraternity, these kind of ideas that emerged, and also human rights was the other one that emerged, which really changed the Western world in a very dramatic sort of way because it caused two revolutions to take place in the late 18th century in Europe and America. And also, in, term, in the 19th century itself, you had in Europe some Im immense, very large ideas that emerged. You know, Marxism, for instance, Nietzsche's work. And then, of course, you had even fascism in some ways emerged around that time in, in terms of people's thinking about changing society in many, you know, almost radical ways. Now, all this kind of thinking, to some extent, was always also seeping into the colonies of Western nations. And India, too, this happened in India. And then you had, for instance, this, I think the first impact of it took place in Bengal, with the, what one today refers to as the Bengal Renaissance, because without the, what was happening in Europe was not felt in India, there would have been no Bengal Renaissance. And the Bengal Renaissance itself, you know, the emergence of the Bengal Renaissance actually brought in a great number of social thinkers. You had the Ramon Roy and so on. But eventually it led to one, you know, in the arts, it led to what I consider the first Renaissance person in Bengali culture. That was, uh, that was Ravindranath Tagore. Now, Rabindranath Tagore, who was born in the 19th century, latter part of the 19th century, it's his 150th birth anniversary year this year, he was the first one, he was the first Renaissance man, and for me, the last of that lot actually is Satyajit Ray, because there is, a, there is a kind of movement which culminates with a person like Ray, and also it's marks another beginning, because like with Tagore, Tagore in terms of the arts was the very first modernist in India. 
Because, you know, between the tradition and the modern, the beginnings of modernity started with Tagore. In the cinema, the beginnings of modernity started with Satyajit Ray.